Hi there, I'm Luma. If you've been watching my YouTube videos, you will recognize the familiar scenery behind me. Yes, I am back home here on the beautiful shores of the Salish Sea on Vancouver Island in Comox Valley. I'm really grateful to be home and grateful to have a home and grateful that I'm able to come and live here again for another 10 months. It's a very special spot here. So I was away traveling this summer in Ontario. I was in England, in Devon and Cornwall. And the last you heard from me was from Cornwall in beautiful St. Ives. And for August, on August 8th, the Lionsgate, I flew from Bristol all the way up to Edinburgh. And so for the month of August, I was traveling in many different areas of Scotland. So you didn't hear from me for a month. I know that's a no-no here on, on social media platforms. You're supposed to stay on and keep posting all the time. Well, let's say I always do things my own way, do things a little bit differently. It's really important uh, at times to uh, take time out and time away. You know, I am an energy intuitive. I sense a lot of things. Sometimes I'm called to do work with the planetary energies and to uh, work with um, things within myself so that I may be clear and available to work with others and to give you a clear transmission in terms of understanding energetics that we are navigating currently. So let's dive in here. It's September the 10th today. My goodness, my favorite time of year uh, here on the Northwest Coast. So extraordinarily beautiful here. We're coming into the fall equinox and I'm already feeling the, this beautiful stillness here that we get at this time of the year. So I hope my microphone is picking up some of the crickets are, are singing in the background here. Oh, it's the most soothing sound and we really, uh, it's going to send a nice attuned and calm nervous system to you all wherever you're listening to today because we're of course, navigating highs and lows, ups and downs, and a lot of turbulence, yeah? So take these moments of calm always when we can to recenter and rebalance. So I want to share while I was traveling, you know, as an energy sensitive person and encountering so many different energies in the places and the people and in the land, that it's really important, it was really important to me that I maintain my own center, my own energy center, yeah, and with qualities that are comfortable to me, okay, and so here's a tip, because I know most of you who are listening to this are super sensitive to energy, and it's been challenging to live here, life on earth, where we are dulled down, dimmed, um, you know, often judged, persecuted, and um, penalized for being sensitive beings, okay? So really important to be good with yourself and your own sensitivity. So while I was traveling, I was consciously maintaining every day a calm and clear inner core center and bringing in qualities of comfort and contentedness. So wherever I showed up, I would feel at home within myself and able to adapt to the different energies, places, and people I was encountering on my travels. And for most of my travels, that worked really, really well. Okay, so again, as a tip for you as you're traveling, uh, maybe it's just walking down the street, maybe it's encountering people in your workplace, family members, uh, encountering uh, what you may be watching on other media sources, yeah? to it's really key right now to maintain that calm and clear center within yourself. Because what are we doing right now? We are shifting in terms of understanding consciousness and the paradigm shift that we're engaged in right now, shifting from a very externally focused, we have to go outside of ourselves to get what we need, um, playing the projection game, I need this, I'm gonna get that, manipulation, control, power over, dominating, submitting, oppression, uh, conflict, war, that whole external grab the resources, hoard them, poverty, lack, greed, that whole thing on the external. Yep. Complete 180. We're making a shift here, quite dramatic, to becoming internally sourced beings. 
internally sourced beings, yeah? You're self-responsible and accountable for maintaining and being aware of your own bioenergy field, yeah? Your bio-spiritual energy field, which includes not only your physical body, your emotions, your mind, your etheric bodies, but also your soul, your soul energies, your soul essence, your soul bodies, that's connected into the greater spiritual dimensions and cosmic realms, okay? So just to give you a navigational cue for keeping your, your energy systems running really well while we're going through a lot of turbulence and change is to visualize yourself as an egg, yeah? With a beautiful golden yolky center, you know, like a nice beautiful farm fresh egg that's got that deep, rich, yellow, yolky center, yeah? So what's that? That's your soul essence. That's your vital life force energy, your soul force energy. That belongs in your form body, yeah? That's what nourishes, that's what heals, that's what regenerates, that's what keeps you alive and vital. And, you know, we've lived with that very depleted, many of us. We have, we have, um, not been able to bring that in and embody that in our body. We may have been like a displaced egg yolk, like our yolk was, was somewhere outside of our shell. You know, you probably know what I'm talking about if that's been you, feeling very disembodied, very drawn to, to go back to the spiritual realms. And uh, because it's been really hard here because you couldn't, you know, bring that beautiful, rich, golden soul essence goodness right into your body to nourish you so that you can feel aligned and connected with all the dimensions of life here, yeah? We're extraordinary, multifaceted, multidimensional beings, yeah? And we're every day waking up to the, the, the richness, the depth and the breadth of who we are, yeah? And our place here on planet Earth and part of this planetary ecosystem, part of this sacred ecosystem, of the energies of plants and trees and forests, mountains, waters, minerals, rocks, animals, birds, of the elements of the four elements, yeah. So I'm just gonna pause here and let you take some of this in. So let's bring your awareness back to again, that beautiful golden yogi, uh, soul essence center yeah so we uh, are in the process of doing a lot of we could call it like shamanic soul retrieval work where we're where wherever that essence was displaced or it never actually got correctly aligned into our physicality here we're bringing that back in right so we're going to be encountering places of trauma traumatic events, experiences in our personal life, uh, in our uh, soul records, in our ancestry, and in the environment in places on the earth where there has been a lot of harm done, okay? So sensitive beings, we're, we're, we're picking all of that up. So what does that do? Uh, those those uh, 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 traumatic uh, events, yeah? Uh, create misalignments between our embodied self here, yeah, our soul and our spiritual dimensions, and uh, then the greater great mystery beyond, yeah. Okay, so with all of those are kind of misaligned, you know, your yokes spread way out over there, your soul essence is kind of formless. You, the spirit realm is kind of amorphous and ethereal and you can't really connect, but sometimes you can. And you're kind of more like a scrambled egg, right? <laughs> like your egg's all scrambled up, right? So what are we doing? We're bringing with this, this um, alignments, uh, everything's coming back uh, into its natural order so that we can, you know, embody a fuller uh, essence of who we are here, okay? So what are we noticing? Places where we are out of alignment. So at our human level experience, those are going to be, you know, developmental stages that, that maybe got missed or interrupted from the time that we uh, were conceived until the age of about seven. Early childhood trauma, we all have it, right? So um, 
anything in that where you know there are misalignments in in the formation of your physical body those are we're going to be encountering those uh, misalignments so we can gently bring them back into alignment so that your soul can match up nicely with your physical form and then soul can line up naturally with the beautiful spiritual realms as well so we can all work in a beautiful coordinated fashion again and life could be a lot simpler and easier for us all that's my prayer every day okay so we are moving in that direction even though it may not feel like it why because we're feeling the, the the pain and suffering of the misalignments yeah like we kind of got used to being a scrambled egg or or living in a disjointed way where we're you know we have to holding ourselves at weird at weird angles in order to accommodate or, or fit ourselves in, leave some of ourselves out, you know, cancel out other parts of ourselves, judging, not including, excluding, dividing, conquering, conflict against ourselves, conflict against each other, a lot of misalignments, right? Okay, so those are becoming really glaringly obvious. See them for what they are, yeah? See them for what they are, you know? A lot of the time uh, when I was in Scotland, it was like I went to the dark heart of, of, the, of the colonial tentacles, right? That came from the, the, from the United Kingdom and, and spread out colonial, in a colonial uh, way of, uh, around the world, right? Um, you know, I, I grew up in Canada. I was very well aware that um, this land was colonized, yeah? My ancestors came from from Europe. A lot of them came from the British Isles and Ireland over here. So I was very well aware of this um, mismatch of this beautiful uh, continent of North America here. Yeah, the beautiful, gentle energies, the people who had lived here from time immemorial, as it is said, uh, maintaining equilibrium and balance with the elements here. And then the uh, disturbance of that that delicate balance you know of our human relationships with all of the elemental forces and life forms here okay so i was always excruciatingly aware of these imbalances from a young age i grew up in toronto on the shores of lake ontario in a house that was a block away from the lake okay it was it, i grew up in my grandmother's house which had been my great grandfather's house a lot of history uh, in uh, on the shores of Lake Ontario. There's beautiful rivers and streams. It was a very abundant and rich, full of gorgeous uh, natural abundance um, some 200 years ago. And I was very well aware of the damage and harm that had been done. Um, and I can see it even within my lifetime of the past 50 years. You know, I was aware of the changes in my grandmother's lifetime. She was she lived to be nearly a hundred, and how life was for her. Um, they were still eating fresh fish every day out of Lake Ontario. When I grew up as a kid, it was disgustingly polluted, and there was uh, heaps of dead fish piled up on the shore. Um, there were chemicals being dumped into the water, and um, they were very famous in the 60s. I think it was the uh, the Detroit River, one of the, or Ohio River, that actually was in flames because there were so many chemicals dumped into the water, okay? So why am I sharing all this? I was on a big arc of travels this summer. Yeah, a big arc of travels and tuning into where uh, are those misalignments uh, in the earth that are affecting us and how our misalignments within ourselves are affecting the earth profoundly yeah okay so that's why I was like where's the source of this imbalance and so I've been tracking this my whole life where did it come from how did it gain so much power why is harm so much stronger than care and kindness and good yeah so again, I was kind of going deep into the dark heart of, of finding the, the source of the, the, the darkness, you know? It's like, okay, let's go back. Let's go back in time, yeah? Let's go back to like the beginning of these like invasions and colonizations and genocides and, you know, being traveling in Scotland where the forests were eliminated. Shocking, 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 my God. 
okay? So I went to a few places in Scotland where there were still little tiny little pockets of old growth. They do exist there. And what I also found there in uh, the gardens of Schoon Palace. Schoon Palace is in Perth on the shores of the Tay River. Yeah. And I was walking in those gardens and I came upon a grove of Douglas fir trees, 200 year old Douglas fir trees. What are they doing there in Scotland? You know, I live here on the West Coast. That's the predominant natural forest here are Douglas firs, Western red cedars, Sitka spruce, uh, hemlocks, yeah. The coniferous trees make up the majority of the natural landscape here. Um, and like, how, how did these, how, how, how did these trees get here? So I read the story of how the Douglas firs got the name Douglas that there was a, a young man who worked in the gardens there at Schoon Palace. Must have been a very ambitious young guy. And he traveled the world collecting seeds and cataloging plants and trees and bringing them back. So there's kind of like a co huge collection of plants and trees in this um, Schoon Palace garden. Um, and uh, God, I might just cry here because um, when I sat, in that grove. Of Douglas firs. You know, just really hit me. Um, how displaced and misplaced um, people and species have been on this planet. Um, and I was talking to a, a dear friend yesterday about this experience and and um, what she shared with me really resonated with a lot of truth is that when we feel deeply as sensitive, intuitive, empathic beings, yeah, um, when we feel and we shed our tears, we are actually moving and clearing and healing with the earth, with the forests with ourselves, with our uh, repairing our relations of humans with the natural world here, that we are a part of this ecosystem and it's bloody well time for us to to play our part correctly. Yeah. Okay. Gosh. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I was encountering a lot of, uh, uh, gosh, deep and hard truths um, on my trip this year and uh, I'll be unpacking some of these uh, in future videos. But again, um, you know, often we feel guilty as humans for doing so much harm. You know, growing up in Canada, we feel guilty as being settlers and colonizers and participating in, in the genocide of indigenous people and indigenous species, yeah? We, we live with that guilt and we live with that shame and we, we like hate ourselves, you know? Um, is this really helpful to, to feel self-hate? Yeah. Parents come to me for sessions um, because their kids are, feel hopeless. Yeah. They, they believe that humans are a harmful species and it would be better if we, we just all died and didn't exist. Yeah. How may we correct that? Yeah. How may we come back to self-love? Yeah. How may we come back into our correct and good relations and alignments with the sacredness of life? Yeah. To, to bring back balance, to restore balance. We can't bring it back to what it was because we're somewhere else now. We're on the spiral of life and it, we're never in the same place twice, yeah? So finding a new balance with where we are now and the spiral of life that we are on and the current of life that is carrying us in, in new directions, yeah? What must we let go of, yeah? 
our judgments, mm -hmm. our stories. My goodness, this is a <laughs> quite a video here today. So thank you for listening. If you've been listening this far, um, and to stay with whatever it is that you're feeling in your life right now, yeah. It's very uh, tempting and compelling to get pulled into uh, a dark spiral right now, yeah? To get pu pulled into a dark whirlpool vortex, yeah? Of negativity, yeah? Of, uh, of harm, of despair, of hopelessness, of powerlessness, yeah? Of getting like spun out of control, right? So what uh, it's important again coming back to maintaining a calm and clear center here within yourself yeah yes parts of life are crumbling yes parts of life are dying yes old structures are clinging on <laughs> for life yeah they're clinging on clinging on clinging on and bloody strangling the life force energy out of the planet so yeah where in in ourselves do we need to let go is it time to let go yeah don't don't get caught in the spiral, but just know that those those uh, uh, vortexes and whirlpools are there to to uh, uh, disassemble, unwind, take down the old structures that we've been living inside of. There's a lot of fear of change. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, old places of power that are that are getting really nasty and clinging on as tight as they can yeah so just make sure you're not getting swept up into those de the death throes of the old world yeah so that's a lot what I encountered uh this summer was like the death throes of the old world of like that not wanting to let go of power not wanting to let go of control and not wanting to let go of all the resources and the abuses of the resources yeah okay so uh, one more quick little story on my uh, travels in Scotland. Um, I was on a, a ferry boat from uh, the town of Oban. If you've ever been to Scotland on the western side of Scotland um, to an island called Collinsay. And this, uh, the ferry goes past an island called Jura. And near there is a very famous whirlpool called the Cory Vracken Whirlpools. Apparently one of the second largest ocean oceanic whirlpools in the world. Very powerful spinning <laughs> vortex, yeah? And as the ferry got near that part uh, of the ocean where that whirlpool is, uh, I was traveling with a friend and her dog. We were out on the on the deck of the ferry and, and the waves started to get very strange. They were moving in all different directions. There were big swells. The, the boat was really, really rocking. And we both knew we were near that, that whirlpool. Yeah, Cory Vracken. Um, the word sounds a lot like Kraken. What is Kraken? It's the mythological, the uh, from Norse mythology, of giant sea monster, a giant sea creature that's like a giant squid or a giant octopus, you know, and it's uh, in the mythology, it creates these whirlpools and it sucks down ships and sailors and people and it just this this like black hole sucking tentacly nasty creature that just takes and takes and takes, yeah. Seen some of that in like the Disney movies, like in the Little Mermaid movies, right? Kind of a caricature of, of that. Um, sea monster, the kraken. So I think I had feelings of like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I encountering here? Yeah. If I really want to look at the sources of what is this like vampiric, par parasitic, sucking, dark tentacled thing that's reaching out and sucking the life force energy out of everybody and the, the whole planet. Yeah. Let's look at the face of a, let's look at this, like these mythological forces. Yeah. Which, uh, you know, being an energy intuitive, I see a lot of phenomena, some scary looking phenomena at times, some extraordinarily beautiful phenomena also. Yeah. So I was looking more at the scary side uh, as I was on this ferry boat. Um, and I just get to keep calm, keep my eyes on the horizon, to keep myself steady, to keep myself in balance. 
to rest assured that I was going to have a safe passage. The ferry was going to reach the island and it did and it did and it did. Yeah. So, um, more stories to tell about that, uh, which I think I'll save for another video uh, about encountering um, these uh, big uh, mythological uh, energies um, in the planet, okay? Um, and I, I believe that it's part of our work now uh, also too. You know, when, we, when we're good within ourselves and balanced within ourselves and we can be of service in these other ways too, uh, working to restore balance uh, with ourselves and the planet, okay? All right, I'm gonna take a little pause here. I shared a lot of different things. We went on quite a little emotional roller coaster ride here in this video. Probably a reflection of, you know, I kind of reflect uh, a lot of what's going on in the, in the collective energetic field. So um, I can feel that Everyone's on their own emotional roller coaster at times, yeah, where we're, parts of ourselves are still gripping in fear, trying to control and stay in control, keep things the way they work so they are familiar, even though it was painful and there's a lot of suffering. We're in that kind of void space. We don't know uh, what we're quite moving into. We don't want to let go until we can grab hold of something else, but it's not about grabbing hold of anything anymore. There's a lot of fluidity, a lot of flow, and I'm sensing into new uh, energies coming in. Uh, the, again, I spoke about this one uh, in at the end of August when I posted my last video from Cornwall about the softness, this quality of softness, yeah, that permeates everything that can soften down the rigidity, uh, help to see old structures down that are afraid to die or forget that they're supposed to even decompose, right? And let them go down, let them go down, let them go down, because we got what? There's new information coming through. Life is continuing on in some shape, form or another, and we're not necessarily in control of that. Actually, not at all, you know, but we are participating, yeah. We have choices, responsibilities, accountabilities here, yeah. So keep doing the good work that you're doing wherever you are on this planet, yeah. Stay calm and centered within yourself, in internally focused, being able to adapt, you know, let go when you need to, be in the void space, Stay with the not knowing, the discomfort, starting to feel some new possibilities bubbling up. Yeah. Keep in mind the young people, the little ones that are coming. You know, what can we do as elders here to help them land well here so that they may do what they are here to do? Yeah. A lot of things, yeah. Alrighty. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, of course, I am back home again, so I am have my full regular schedule of one-on-one -on -one work again. I'll be uh, posting more up also over on Telegram and Patreon as well. And uh, I do have an email list below. So uh, as I'm formulating some new offerings for the fall season, you can join my email list and find out about that. And uh, also check back here on YouTube. Uh, well, I'll, I will appear again relatively soon. So uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, take good care. Bye for now.